Yes, I. This song is called Be the Change. Inspired by the words of Mahatma Gandhi, who lived for peace and not violence, and told us to be the change we wish to see in the world. Welcome to the 100th Monkey Radio with Tom and Ramon. Uh, we are recording this on July 28th of 2014. Oh, wow, Ramon, I had just an amazing weekend. I just got back from East SETI and I uh, went out there and uh, went to uh, Laura Eisenhower and Dr. Dream's workshop they had out there. And uh, it, it, so they, I'm impressed with those two. I, I mean, I am really impressed with those two. They, they are one of those uh, very obvious uh, divine union that is doing their work on the planet at a extremely high level. A couple things that I, I pulled out of the, the weekend that, that really struck home to me, uh, one of them had to do with the, uh, with the Archons. And, you know, every time I've looked into the Archons and I've, I've you know, done any research on it, uh, it's always been had a very negative bent to it that uh, you know the archons are the bad guys right they're the the energy suckers and the, the all this crap you know so so you know that's that's the flavor that everybody has in their mouth about the archons and and what they brought to the table about the archons this weekend was that uh, a little entomology about the word archon and uh, it, and I haven't looked this up myself, but uh, what they said was that the word archon act, translates into the word the word leader. And now I understand how the creation of the archons and everything came about uh, through the uh, the creation of the 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 uh, solar system through the pleroma and all this stuff that these were just kind of a byproduct of the whole creative process and uh, what they brought to the table was that the, within the archon there the, that creative process there were there were both a positive and a negative that were created at the same time and they're equating this more to our our perception and the way we see things as angels and demons, right? So uh, we have the the uh, evil demons and the good angels, right? So there's the, the, what what they brought out was just basically another um, another point for me to sit and rub my chin and go, hmm. I wonder, and I, I'm definitely going to have to dig into this a little bit deeper, and maybe um, look at between the read between the lines a little bit on some of this mythologies or that's surrounding the Archon, and uh, uh, see if I can't winnow out a little bit more insight for myself on this. But that was probably one of the bigger things that I pulled out of the weekend. Some fantastic people showed up over there, very uh, bright. When I say bright, that's energetically very bright people. And uh, we had some pretty good sightings in the sky, a couple of really amazing ones. And uh, the mountain was just a light. So there were all sorts of lights on the mountain. Uh, there, were, there was one point where uh, there were three, three separate lights in three separate spots on the mountain that were kind of flashing in sync. And that, that one just kind of blew me away. It's like, okay, well, you know, I can probably chalk one or two of the lights that are up on the mountain to maybe uh, some mountain climbers that are up there in their camp at, at midnight, still awake at midnight, flashing their lights down in the valley. Okay, well, possibly, right? Uh, I don't know. If I was a mountain climber and up there i don't know that i would be up at midnight flashing my light down in the valley to mess with some people that are sky watching <laughs> so anyways all in all it was a great weekend had a fantastic time and uh actually uh i was uh glad to get home though 
always glad to get home. So how's it going over there, Ramon? Uh, it's going pretty good. Um, the weather's been hot, uh, so that's been a little bit. It's been a little bit hard to sleep, but other than that, everything is good. Um, I have this uh, one news thing that I found that was absolutely amazing, and um, an eleven-year-old boy had a dying wish to donate his organs so others could live. He lost his battle with brain cancer on Friday. Obviously, this is much older. As his body was wheeled from the surgery room to harvest his organs, the medical team bowed to honor him and the lives he saved. Um, and in the picture, it's it's a sad story, but at the same time, it's a wonderful story. Um you see all the the whole this is in China all the medical um doctors they all bowed as you know they're they're taking his body and he already passed away to kind of honor him because you know he he said I want to save if I'm going to die I want to save other people I was like his dying wish so it's just an yeah, it's an amazing story. For eleven eleven year old to have that kind of presence of mind is is amazing within itself, you know. Yeah, well, you know what I've been saying about this generation and stuff like that. Like, right. yeah, we have our troublemakers, but we got some wild wow, man, some amazing people. Now, this one here is for those people um, who may complain about their body weight and stuff like that. Um, just add water, three delicious me metabolism, metabolism uh, boosters. Metabolism boosters. Thank you. I'm still sleeping. Um, so one of the, I'll just uh, tell you what the things. Uh, one of them is red pepper. Add uh, red pepper to your water. Just let it sit in the water and then drink that. Uh, the other one is cucumber. And the last one you probably heard me say it before is cayenne pepper. Um, all three of these things will help you um, mm -hmm. increase your me metabolism. And um, the cayenne pepper also, you know, I told my mother about it and she was using it. And her blood pressure had like regulated. Uh, she had high blood pressure and then she was taking it for a while, the cayenne pepper with water every day. <laughs> And it, actually, she said the doctor said it regulated, so she didn't have to take the um, those damn drugs that I didn't want her taking. So nice, yeah. And last but not least, this one I've never done any research into this man, and his name is a uh, Wang Shen, and he has these devices. Um, they're uh, what do you call them? Not free energy, but those um, kind of like free energy devices. I'm looking for the name. Where is it? Anyway, um, so he has like this uh, 5K uh, device. He has a motor. He has these toy lights that none of them use battery or need to plug in. Um, and according to this story here, uh, everything, you know, they were like promoting it. And then they had to take him off because the Chinese classified all of these things. So there you again, there you go again. Uh, some people come out with some great inventions and they get classified and put on a shelf somewhere. Yeah, well, didn't that story also say that it had been the it had gotten classified and then now it's declassified again? Is that what I was reading? Um, I'm skimming through it. Uh, this is that uh, Wang stuff, right? Yes. Wang uh, Shen. Yeah. Wang Shen He. Anyways. Yeah. Yeah. So. There's, you know, the that whole the free whole free energy genre or magnetic motors or you know I don't know free energy just doesn't fit the that word doesn't work right for me. There's something. I think it scares, there, there, it scares too many people off. There's enter, there's there's stuff attached to that word that doesn't make me feel very comfortable anymore. Um, so I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I, I think what I'm looking at is uh, like a perpetual motion machine magnetic 
motor or something. Uh, yeah, even that word like it tends to scare people off. Let me finish this last one. Um, uh, this one is really exciting. Monsanto orders to pay $93 million to a small town for poisoning citizens. I think this is a huge uh, win, and this is amazing. Um, big win happens in small places. The West Virginia State Supreme Court finalized a big blow to the biotech giant Monsanto this month, finishing a settlement causing Monsanto to pay $93 million to the tiny town of Nitro, which I've never heard. Uh, in West Virginia for poisoning citizens with Agent, Agent Orange chemicals. Um, so, again, I, I think this is a huge, so, a, a huge so, win. So how many towns did Mon- has Monsanto poisoned that where they didn't get caught? Yeah, <laughs> but this will give the, um, you know, this will... Sets win of other people. Exactly. Yeah. You know. That you can fight them and you can win. Yeah, yeah. You know, because a lot of people get the, you know, that one saying I hate in Japan is like, what you going to do? There's nothing yeah. you can do. And it's like, that's not true. There's always something you can do. So back to the free energy stuff for a second here, Ramon, uh, before we get off into our guest here. Uh, she's being so patient. <laughs> so uh, where is this stuff? I mean, we were we were on the verge of seeing seeing something come out three years ago. A hundred years ago. I mean, yeah, we. I mean, we've been right on the verge of some one of these technologies being open sourced and put out there for people, and I haven't seen it yet. Where's it at? I mean, the stuff that's getting open sourced is crap. I, excuse my French, and um, but there's there's nothing that's that's put out there yet that is making a difference. And you know, I'm I I know there's a lot of guys out there that are working at this, that are trying this stuff, and and trying to get something working and out there. And you know, I suppose that there's um, some pressure put on from other quarters that that you know people could be paranoid about and and make them hesitant to release something. But oh, come on, guys. We, we need this on the planet. The planet really needs something like this. Uh, it would. It, it, I mean, we need a game changer. We really need a game changer here. Well, there's, there's two guys we need to get in contact with. The um, guys doing the, uh, the project in Russia, which is, if you haven't heard about it, it's the same project that um, that Tesla was trying to do up in Long Island, New York. Right, so, right. The Warden Cliff type tower. Yeah, so they're building one of those. The way they're calling them Tesla Tower now, I think. And um, yeah, they're, well, they're, one they're just ones. in the they're just in the gathering funds stage right now. I mean, what what were they at last week? They were at what thirty grand out of eight hundred. Yeah. Uh, so that's that that project's a long ways off, you know, and and I don't know that that's the uh, I mean, if that technology gets off the ground and they're able to build this thing, then the next step is that everybody's going to have to have a receiver. So you'll have to have a, a receiver that's specifically tuned to that that uh, frequency or wavelength or whatever the heck it is, and uh, to be able to, to turn it into usable, usable power in your home. So I mean that that technology, even if they were to start building the tower today, if they started building it like today, I don't see them being done with the tower in a year. I mean maybe a year uh, to build the tower itself, and then then we have all that the other stuff on top of it. You know I've I've seen a couple of these magnetic motors out there that have. People have put YouTubes out on that are ext- very simple technology, and I guess who I'm calling out to here right now is some of those guys that have got those magnetic motors that are working prototypes and have all the angles and the magnet orientations worked out. Uh, that's the kind of information I would love to see out there. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's certain combination of things uh, that will stop it from coming out, and one would be just 
the the guys uh he wants to patent and sell it and he doesn't want to give it away so that in that in itself can stop things yeah that's the the, that greed card gets in there yeah instead of looking at the the greater whole but oh well let's uh let's get off of that and let's go ahead and get our guest in here yeah, I think she fell asleep. Yeah, we've got Mona Delfino back to the, the show tonight for you. She is a medical intuitive vibrational healer and a massage therapist. Uh, she's been a, she's been an exceptional body worker for over twenty years, and coming into this field of healing naturally, her passion and abilities as a healer became apparent at a very young age. In addition to her teaching in Reiki, polarity therapy, sound toning, and crystal healing. Uh, structural therapy, and many uh, indigenous vibrational medicines, Mona has had the unique experience of studying with her mentor of 12 years, Cherokee medicine woman Karen Land. Karen was known as Double Eagle in the Cherokee tribe. She passed in 2005 with her knowledge still running through Mona. Mona has spent time studying in Hawaii on the Big Island in Hilo to learn directly from Lomi Lomi masters and Kapuna to and Kapuna to bring back the traditional Hawaiian healing that carries the knowledge that all healing comes from love. Her website is www.sacredconnections.com. And Mona, welcome back to the Hundredth Monkey. Well, thank you, Tom and Ramon. It is so good to be back with you. I think I'm going to have to change all of that and start putting more about. What the new passion's all about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, I think I think that's, that's the same same bio that we've used for. Geez, I guess we. 2011. How long ago? What was it? Almost three years ago, you came on the show the first time. Yeah, that's right. I've been on quite a few times. Yeah, this is a this is really really new times and new changes are happening all over the place, as you guys know. And boy, oh boy, do we have a lot of people who are waiting to hear this show today. They are. Chewing at the bit to find out um, all of the different things that I have discovered and that you guys will be able to participate and share in um, as we do our talk tonight. Um, it's it's getting very exciting. And uh, I just want to say that, Tom, when you were talking about ESETI, I'm glad that you went because I really love Dr. Dream and Laura Eisenhower. Boy, these are incredible people. And they really are out there to help to change and shift the world. You know, they're really the real deal. Yeah. So I'm really glad you went. Yeah, yeah. it's fun. Uh, the the integrity oozes off of them. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, they they they're in it for the right reasons, and there's there's no oh there's none of those uh, little curtains hung up on the side that go. I wonder what's behind there. You know. Yeah. 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 And that's neat that you saw some ships out there. That's really exciting. Uh, you know, Mount Adams is so full of that, you know, and right now all those mountains are. I've been doing a lot of retreats and I've been doing a lot of traveling since I talked to you guys last. Uh, a lot of work, actually quite a bit of work. Um, and uh, just now taking three days off at the Oregon coast. So, yay, I, I am getting rejuvenized and ready for the next round. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh man, you know this the the planet is getting absolutely insane, Mona. I mean, oh. if you I mean if you look at it from the western uh third dimensional set of goggles, uh we look out there and oh my god, I mean all this stuff going on over there in Israel and Gaza mm -hmm. and the Ukraine and and yeah, you know, I won't even touch Africa. I mean, there's so much stuff going on there that we don't hear about. It's ridiculous. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. And then, then all the different the stuff that just happening here in the U.S. the the funky ass laws that they continue to pass and uh, the 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 noose that seems to be getting and or at least like it feels like it continues to get a little bit tighter and tighter and tighter on on humanity here. Yep. Yep. Um, it's, I don't know. What the hell's going on with all this craziness? <laughs> well, uh, you know, here's from, here's from my, my viewpoint. I, I'll tell you, for those people that haven't heard me before, Tom and Ramon, I'm just going to mention a few things. Uh, I've been doing, I've been doing, uh, 
healing work since I was a baby. And actually, you know, starting with my grandmother and working with her ankles and all this, I came in knowing uh, basically how to work with people because it was easy for me. This is what I came in with. So this is my ability. Some call it a gift and some call it a curse. <laughs> right. But in, anyway, this is what I do for a living. I, I teach people how to learn energy work. Um, and I teach them how to understand how to take care of themselves. Now, now, even though I do that, uh, there is also more to the story, obviously, because energy knows no bounds. So a lot of what I do is I base my understanding uh, with the people. And so what I see in the people, um, I see in the world. And it is just like that. So, you know, it mirrors my clients. Sometimes we'll have to mirror what's happening in the world. And so it makes me feel as though I have a better handle on what's happening out there. So to answer your question, <clears throat> I think most of it is happening because the ego is dying. Um, ego hates to die. One of the biggest things that's happening within us is also happening in the world and vice versa. And a lot of that is occurring because the ego is dying. Uh, ego cannot live up to spirit. It is an insecurity. Um, it's a type of an insecurity that comes out in our emotions. And so whether or not we're going to feel good about being who we are or still trying to hide it because of fear or abuse or abandonment or whatever you want to call it, um, we're trying so hard to prevent the the realness of what's happening within ourselves, and therefore that's preventing what's really happening in the world. So we can make it anything we want because right now we're being blessed with constant chaos. <laughs> right, right. And that can turn into anything. So you're right. We have absolutely no idea, none of us do, as to what is going to be happening in this world. The only thing we can do is go within ourselves and become that change, you know, which is such a amazing comment is be the change you want to see in the world. And that, that's exactly what's happening. So in my way of looking at it, in the way that I have read a lot of people, um, I see that they're – they're dying to an old way that was within them a long, long time ago that they felt as though these were survival issues. Now, every single person uh, has learned how to survive. And we did this when we were six years old. And Bruce, my friend Bruce Lipton, talks about it as well. And, you know, he talks about how when we're six years old, there's actually a, um, a way that you can tell in the blood that there is change in our perceptions, there's change in the way that we think, there's change in the way that we see things and we project ourselves onto others by feeling that we have to change a certain way in order to protect ourselves. Now, when we were six years old, we did this as a regular basis because we didn't know if our mothers were going to love us or fathers were going to love us or even our friends or anybody else for that matter, or if we loved them. It was going to have to be a, a somewhat of a crapshoot. And so when we woke up from time to time when we were six years old, we had to make these decisions. What were we going to do about it? Well, we had to develop a behavior pattern. And that behavior pattern came from the only way that we knew how to survive. So we grew up this way, and we intended for most of us, intended for the better part of our world to be able to coincide with everybody else's. However, or unfortunately, uh, you know, we come into quite a few challenges in life that, that tell us that the way that we thought things were aren't necessarily the way they, they are or the way that they could be because things are constantly changing. But we don't know that when we're kids. So we try to develop and to stick with a behavior pattern that's going to continue the rest of our lives because that's what we thought was protecting us. Now, Bruce Lipton talks 95% is subconscious in our mind. Everything we do is 95% subconscious and only 5% conscious. I saw him last month, and one of the things that's really interesting is it's like <clears throat> some of these people were saying, well, well, wait a minute, though. If we're only, you know, if we're only 5% conscious, then how the hell are we supposed to get along, and how are we supposed to live through that? This doesn't make any sense. How do we do that? And he says, well, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I'm just giving you the facts, ma'am. You know, you do what you can. You know? Auto you Autopilot. You pay attention and you stay in the moment. That's really how you do it. You pay attention, you realize you're, you're more powerful than what you were, and you recognize you made it up. When you recognize you made it up, that's when you take your power back. 
Because then you can turn around and say, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore. This is not what I like. And how many people today are fed up? How many people are tired of the way things are? And they are. They're, they're tired of the way that they've had to be. They're tired of, of everything right now. And um, a couple months ago, George Nori came to one of our EarthKeeper um, conferences, and he was so funny. And, and he stood up and he goes, the first thing they said is, and this is George Norrie from Coast to Coast Radio. And uh, George, what would you like to say? <laughs> he says, all right, can I see a show of hands? How many people are just uh, uh, fed up and they're not going to take it anymore? How many people are just so tired and they just don't want to take it anymore? They're mad as hell. And every person in the room raised their hand, probably around 600 people. I'm done. <laughs> So, so this is the way that it is happening. I think we're all getting to that point where we're tired of the way that things are. We're tired of the way that we have reacted. We're tired of the way people are reacting. So basically what's happening right now is we're being faced with a subconscious understanding to some degree. We're going to get it sooner or later. It's going to come in um, that our ego is dying. Um, many years ago, you mentioned my mentor, Karen Land. She was a Cherokee uh, seer. She could see through the body. And when I say seer, I'm not kidding. She saw everything. This woman was fabulous absolutely you never you never met a higher healer this this woman was incredible and um and i had her for 12 years i was very fortunate to have her uh, mentor me for 12 years and um and karen had said so many many wonderful things but you know uh, along that line is that she was really saying that ego was the beast whenever anybody said what's the beast in the in the bible karen what, what is the beast and she goes well that's the ego and and so you know basically we, this is what it is and so we're at a point now where this ego is trying to fight back so it doesn't die and it's been there for eons and eons and eons of time so so here, you know here's something that i'm you know as far as the ego is concerned i'm a, i'm a little i'm on the fence on on the ego death thing now I I kind of see it more of a, of a taming of the ego instead of the death of the ego. Because well, I don't, I, it depends I don't, on how you see the ego. I, I think it depends on how you see the ego because the ego that I'm talking about is the one that was the insecure protector, the one that tried to keep us from understanding who we really are due to the fact that past lives over and over and over again have convinced us that we need protection in order to live on the planet. And that's that's the ego I'm talking about, Tom. It's not the the beautiful, wonderful uh, truth. Okay, the truth is different. But if we use the term ego for that beautiful truth, then what we're doing is people are not understanding uh, some of the uh, terminology. So we kind of have to be careful with terminology here. Yeah. Uh, you know, because that, that's really what you were saying earlier, too, is that, you know, sometimes we say these words, but people don't know what we mean by them. Right. Yeah. And, you know, I think and I think our language right now is a little bit feeble in actually describing even the ego and oh, yeah. it's many it's many facets. Oh, yeah, uh, it really because is. I, I think that the way I see the ego in a broad in a, this is a very broad stroke is that um, without ego, we lose our individuality. I don't think our individuality is there without some some aspect of the ego, which which basically ego is the individuality, mm -hmm. uh, the personality. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, so when I look at this, in in as you know, I, I've heard so many different uh, gurus and teachers and 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 lectures and stuff out there talking about uh, you know uh, the the death of the ego and eliminating the ego and all these certain certain types of things like that but and but what I, the way I every time I hear that the way I interpret it for myself is it's basically it's a taming of the ego or if you want to term it as death it's a death of a certain some certain aspects of the ego mhm mm mhm mm well sure and and you can you know you can you can use any any form of terminology that you understand around that but 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 the bottom line is that is what's happening in the universe so you know when you ask the question that is the thing that i see over and over and over again ego doesn't have to be um 
uh, what's the word, you know, uh, arrogant. It doesn't have to be arrogant. It's just uh, illusionary. Um, and, it, and it does have an, um, a sense of illusion around itself. So people don't know who to be. And, and when somebody says, you know, be who you really are, they're going, yeah, what, huh? Yeah, who's you know, that? They don't, they don't know what that means. What does that mean? How, how do you be who you are if you don't even know who the hell you are? So that's where we're going with this whole thing. And it's important that we begin to understand more and more and more about a accepting what we've been it's not about dropping it it's about accepting it and then we change it see there's the difference it's not about just saying oh i'm going to let go of that or i'm going to let go of that it's it is true that we're going to let go of it but we can't do it unless we connect it first and and that's really the bottom line uh uh, everything about healing has to do with connection. Um, you know, the old saying that Jesus said, two or more gathered. It has to do with connection. And the connection is the Big Bang effect. So any time that uh, any kind of knowledge or information is led to another, and it's biofeedback unto itself, and that is recognition. Recognition becomes the Big Bang. So once you get that aha moment, <clears throat> that's the most important part of learning about yourself is becoming free enough to recognize and allow it. So that has to come before anything else. Once that is there and once that is understood within you that you're learning on a daily basis and you stop beating yourself up for it, um, then you can understand that you are becoming more of what you want to be because that is what is termed as a co-creator. You're making this forward you're doing it forward and you're finding out that you're the stuff that the stars are made of so you are the one who shines you're the one that finds that out later when you let go in the sense by allowing these things to occur mm. does that make sense yes it does absolutely okay absolutely okay so that's what i see is happening in the universe that uh, it is collapsing uh, every everything is collapsing on some level there is no stability there is uh, spontaneous uh, weather patterns right now that are occurring. Uh, there's all kinds of things that are happening that are making people go, oh, wow, oh, wow. But many, many people are not going to want to know what's happening because, well, basically they're scared. Um, and that's part of the thing that's gone. I want to read you something that I saw uh, the other day, and this I just posted on Facebook on my Sacred Language of the Human Body uh, page, and, and basically it's from Greg Braden. You know, I've met Greg a couple times now, and uh, and inside, boy, whew, he's a double cancer, and this guy, he has got the information, and uh, this is one of the things that he said that I thought was really interesting. He said, I firmly be believe that we are living in pivotal moments in the history of this planet. Almost all universal ancient texts and traditions have told us that we will experience something extraordinary in our lifetimes in our world, and in our civilizations, and in our bodies. And boy, ain't that the truth. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ain't no doubt about it. You know, one thing, you know, and, and this kind of refers back to uh, the comment that George, or the thing George Norrie did at that conference you were at, uh, where he asked uh, how many people out here are basically fed up with it. Um, I'm a little concerned with the way the masses are reacting to all this crap that's going on. I mean, yeah. it, there's there's such a strong energy ap apathy energy that's out there. A and I don't know where it's created from or or how this all manifested on the planet. But yes. the, there's yeah. the I mean, just look back forty years ago, fifty years ago, back in the Vietnam era, here in the United States, how many how many people were out protesting war on a daily basis? Mm -hmm. Uh and and look at what we do now. I mean our our feeble attempts of of uh protest or organized protests, the uh uh oh what was that crap? I don't even remember the name of it, Ramon. Uh Occupy. the Occupy the Occupy mm -hmm. movement. I mm -hmm. mean I mean that was that was so lame. It was it it fell yeah. down and yeah. You know what's up with the population and their apathy? Well, I think that they are uh, they're just not aware of the way that they can do things differently because 
you know, the the truth is they think that they come together and like the Occupy movement, you know, they think they can come together and and create something that people can see and then they have movies about it and all this other stuff that can actually be kind of negative because it's just tit for tat. It's not really going in and learning how to shift. It's just going, we're tired of it, we're fed up, we're mad as hell, we're not going to take it anymore. So you're absolutely right. That is that is the way that people are seeing it because it's still part of a lower dimension um, and because we're still in... In this shift over, as Pleiadians call it, the shift over. Okay, so it's like we're still in that position that we haven't learned to adjust to a shift over yet. We're in the process, and and we have to be patient with ourselves because this is a time that is so immediately crucial to be of understanding. And if anything, the best way to do it is to be quiet, not to not to be you know, blasting because there's a lot of power in, uh, in silence. And, and so, you know, we, we just have to learn better is all. And so we just haven't done it because we didn't know how. And so we're trying to, you know, if somebody, if a kid at school is going to raise his fist to you, what are you going to do? Run and hide? Or are you going to turn around and put your fist up? And so this Occupy movement was about saying, well, we can show you ours too. You know, you show us yours, we'll show you ours, <laughs> basically. <laughs> so, you know- but that's, that's not the way to do it. Go ahead. I was going to say, the other thing I see a lot is, I see a lot of people waking up, but they're waking up to the the anger part, mm-hmm. and which it's good, but then it's bad if you get stuck there. So mm-hmm. they're, they're amazing people in the sense of putting the, that information out. And, they're, mm-hmm. you know, you see them on Facebook and they put so much information, mm-hmm. but then they get to the point where... If you have even a slightest different of opinion, they attack. You know, they they at- yeah. they start attacking everything around them. Yeah. Because they feel, I guess, they feel like the victim, or they mm-hmm. they want to help the victims of the mm-hmm. stuff that they're putting out there. Like, for example, you know what's happening to all those uh, poor kids in in Palestine, or yes, the, you know the soldiers in Guantanamo Bay and the abuse and the way people take pictures. So uh, recently I had a, a situation like that where uh, I just I won't give you the situation, but I'll tell you the the comment I said. And I said, you know, I feel really sorry for for those people doing those things because mm-hmm. they're dehumanizing themselves mm-hmm. and the person didn't understand that. So they just attacked it. Um, but what people don't understand in order for you to to dehumanize another person, you have to do it to yourself. There's, mm-hmm. there's no way around it. You know, right. like, you can't, your conscious thought will make you feel bad. You know, your conscious will make you feel bad that you're actually attacking somebody else who right. can't defend themselves. So a part of you has to die in order to be able to do that. Exactly. Exactly. I, I think our world is spiritually suppressed. Um, and, and I don't think that the, the, uh, world understands in so many ways and facts, factors that, um, the, the change is not about, uh, beating somebody up. You know, it, it just never has been. There's, there's never been a winner to war. And no matter how you want to, you know, conceive of what you mean by the word war, there's no winner. It, it just doesn't happen that way. And so, you know, the, the way that I work and kind of jumping back a little bit more into the work I do, I just want to share this. We're all in the form of transference. We all feel, we all feel, whether we're in denial of it or whether we get mad about it or where we're, you know, no matter how our reactions are, on the big scale, we're all feeling. And so we're all a big part of this hodgepodge that's going on out there right now. And so, you know, how do you clear those things up? How do you, how do you not buy into the environment? You know, again, Bruce talks about the environment, Bruce Lipton, and he talks about, you know, when we get sick, it's not so much a heredity. It, it has to do with more about your environment. Where are you picking this stuff up from? Where are you learning it from? How are you learning your perceptions are are part of your body? You can't it, you can't escape that. Everything that you think and feel and and do is a part of your physical body. And so your physical body is trying now more than ever because things have gotten a little bit more speedy um, and expanded. 
And so we're finding out that, again, illness is, is on the rise. And, uh, and what's really interesting is that, uh, he talks about diabetes, which I think is fabulous that he talks about it because, I mean, I've been talking about this stuff for years, but, but Bruce is the scientist and he can stand in front of a uh, thousands of people and be able to claim it because he's got facts and and it's really interesting they can't find anything that causes diabetes isn't that interesting they they can't find that diabetes is even in the body so when the when the effect is happening of diabetes then the effect is kind of like oh where'd that come from and so and you think of how many people have diabetes today and you know and in my world in my work diabetes is always about losing the sweetness of life so diabetes is on the rise and so we're seeing more and more and more of these so-called diagnoses, which I really don't like that word. I, I, I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> we have a condition. <laughs> and we have to learn to be unconditional. <laughs> um, but that's my way of looking at it. And I got to tell you, you want to hear a really neat story? Can I share something with you that happened last week that yes, I think please. you guys will really love? Okay, this is what I am into. I'm into helping people understand that we are in this together, but we have to know down deep inside each and every aspect of why we react and act the way we do. Because seriously, really, we are responsible for our actions, our reactions, and our non-actions. In the end, that's really what it comes down to. And so because we are making this stuff up as we go along, we're trying to learn by understanding the way that we act and react or the way somebody else acts and reacts. So transference is a big thing, and we can learn from it. Okay, so just because I want to share this with you, this is the most incredible story that has just happened, and this was last week. Uh, I worked on 60 people. Well, maybe close to 60. Uh, it was a lot of people. I was just in Carson City, Nevada, and I have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful group of people there. I just cannot even explain to you how incredible these people are. They have been through hell and high water, and they always seem to come out the best way they can, sharing the best things that they can, and being as courageous as they can. I am so impressed with them. And, uh, you know, Carson City is actually known as the City of Light by the Native Americans. Well... When I got there, I think it became a lot lighter. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Um, the people that came in had uh, amazing situations. Like I said, one of this one lady came in specifically, and she is somebody that was so in, in, important in in this whole scheme that I was asked her if I could share it. Of course, I can. She says. And one of the big things that happened was twelve years ago, there was an assault in her home. A kid broke in to her house and was looking for the daughter, who I think was like 18 at the time. He, The daughter had broken up with him because he seemed like a bad seed. So she broke up with him. And anyway, uh, he came in, and he was looking for her, and he had a gun. And uh, she wasn't home that night, and he ended up going into the parents' room, and he shot the father and killed him immediately. Turned around and went to go shoot her. And here this woman is sitting in front of me telling me this story. And she, this happened 12 years ago. So he turns around and he shoots her in the shoulder and, uh, she, he sees her flinch and open her eyes and look at him. So now he knows that she knows who he is. So he turns around and he takes her head and he holds it at gunpoint and in the back of her skull, right by the atlo axis on the right side, he shoots the gun and, uh, the bullet goes up into the brain and out the other side of the skull. The woman was completely conscious the whole time. She told me the story, and I was just, I, I was speechless. I, she's sitting in front of me telling me the story, and I'm going, so you are living proof. You're living proof of, of what I am talking about in terms of surrender. You know, you know what to do. You know that you can go out and talk about this and share this with people. She goes, well, I'm here to have you fix my brain. <laughs> so I said, all right, let's do it. And I, I just, I was crying, you know, I was really, really emotional with her. And then, um, and then I got it together. I started working on her. And next thing I know, I've got my left hand underneath where the bullet had been put in. And I had my, my um, hand on there. And then all of a sudden, I put my right hand up on her forehead and suddenly I get the most, and I'm calm, you know, I'm calm at this point and doing my work and suddenly I'm starting to feel like I'm getting shot in the brain. 
So I then turn around and feel myself going into a tizzy. I can feel almost like I was turning around in in my space and I'm just sitting there. And so my brain was actually taking on her trauma. And what was interesting about that is that she still has a hole in her brain. Uh, that's something that the doctors can't obviously fix. And it's right on the right hand side in the very back of the brain. So, so as they fixed her brain, when she was in the hospital, they were able to, to reconstruct her skull. But the only time she went unconscious was when they shot her, uh, full of, you know, anesthetic. So that she could continue to, you know, so they can get in there and work. But in her world, she says she never went unconscious. And I will vouch for that because when I was working on her, I got every detail. And it was absolutely phenomenal. What was really interesting was that at the end, it was like her brain healed. On a very spiritual, subconscious level, this woman healed. And at the end of this session... um, We hugged each other and had an incredible bond due to this. I walked out of the room, and my friend Donna, who was sitting there in the office where I was working, um, she actually had a foot bath waiting for me. And it was one of those ionizer foot baths, you know, and I had worked so much. She says, Mona, just sit down here and put your feet in here, and it'll start clearing out some of the crap that's in your body. And, you know, with all the things I've taken, yeah, I could sure use it. So I'm sitting there, and all this stuff is coming out of the bath. If anybody's ever had one, you know it just looks like a cesspool in there when you get done with it. And the first thing she says is, oh, my gosh, you've got heavy metals, heavy metals coming out of your body. And there was no reason for that, except for the fact that I had just done transference with this woman. And so I knew for a fact she had been healed. So this is this is how... Um, this is how incredible this healing stuff is. And, you know, the most important thing for me to share is that every single one of us have the ability to be able to rise above the mundane and to be able to look at people and to be able to help them with compassion and an understanding that's going to actually turn into a healing because all you have to do is connect. That's the only thing we have to do is connect. And so you're absolutely right, Tom. The the arguing, the fighting, the way that people are looking at things, none of that's going to do any good. You know, none, none of it. It has to be an eye-to-eye compassion. It literally has to be a connection in order for any healing to take place. So on that note, I wanted to share that this is this is the timing that we are being given you know, by the cosmos, the universe, God, whatever you want to call it, that is helping us to recreate what we want to have on the planet. And chaos is part of the deal. So you have to have the chaos in order to know that you are unraveling what was or what has been. Even if you see patterns, you know, I think even Bette Midler had posted on Facebook the other day about, Hey, you know, there's a war in Israel and these things are happening. Is anybody seeing a repeat of something here? You know, and it's like, yeah, everything is repeating again. Why? Because it hasn't been changed. So it has to come up just like in our daily lives in order for us to be able to recognize it, like I said earlier, and then shift it. But like I say, if we don't have the recognition, we we don't know how to change. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, that's definitely uh, getting that connectedness between people. Uh, you know, us out here in, in these fields, you know, the consciousness, the spirituality, the healing fields, we're out there and we're interacting with people and we are getting that one-on-one communication, you know, we're getting mm-hmm. those connections. Uh, but I, I think the challenge that we have as a society is that e- e- people don't, aren't connecting even when they go out to dinner together. Right. The families will, will go out to dinner and you'll have two kids and two parents and each one of them has their, their fancy ass, uh, you know, a smartphone and they got their nose in it. They don't even talk to each other while they're mm-hmm. eating dinner. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, okay. so I see, I see this is one of the biggest challenges right now on the planet is, is overcoming the distractions and yeah. getting back to the communication. Right. The, 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 right. the contact. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so that is exactly what we need to be doing is, is really, you know, talk to each other, you know, be honest with each other. There's nothing better than that. And apparently what's happening is that um, <laughs> if we hadn't cleared something up in the past, I will tell you what, I bet 10 out of 10 people are finding that they have to do it now. There is something happening in the universe that's about the sensitivity of the human. And and I will say this out loud. It's very, very important to understand that everybody's feeling a little nervous. And, you know, they're having a little bit of like, you know, you go through these little nervous things and you don't know why. People aren't sleeping well, you know, and then they have to sleep during the day because they can't sleep at night, et cetera, et cetera. So all these things are happening. And in my way of looking at things, it's because we're being downloaded um, by the universe where, again, we're being bombarded it here you know we're, we're feeling these things are happening and it's turning into intensity from a third dimensional way of looking at things but on a higher level it's about more recognition about recreating again what it is that you want to see what you want to do how you want to feel because this is all about individuality and freedom so as we are discovering that we are becoming more individual and more free we're also seeing that we are more judgmental and so this is another thing that is happening out there that we got to watch because the judgments are 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 hurting us. They're hurting us. They're, it's no different than trying to be an Occupy movement. You're, you know, we're still judging. And so the way we have to start doing things is stop the the ego, stop the judgments, and rise above to the occasion of understanding that you are somebody who can make a difference even though you may have to stand back once in a while and there's nothing wrong with that because we all learn and so we have to do that in order to get it in order to see where we have to go next that is a daily lesson and it's happening more to people now than i've ever seen before i don't know about you guys but boy i'm seeing a lot of people going through a lot of stuff that they were not prepared for and they're tired right Mm mm-hmm right do you, do you put a distinction between judgment and, say, observation or or that sort of thing? Well, there's a fact. You know, there's there's facts. I mean, that's how that's how our bodies work. That's what science is. I mean, it's based on facts. So our opinions can either be factual or judgmental. And so, you know, I mean, if you know that something is a fact, it's, different. it's hard to know when your perception says, "But this is the way I see it." You know, then you're then you're caught in the middle of wondering whether or not you're you're facing it. My suggestion is pull back in and 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 see a bigger picture because right now everybody can go crazy watching the news. Everybody can go crazy watching the news. Everyone's going to say, "Oh my God, the world's going mad." Yes, the world is changing, and, and I'd really rather use that word. The world is changing because once you start putting a label. On it. It's no different than being diagnosed. You, you have to recognize that labels are not the way of spirit world. Uh, they, they don't work in spirit. They only, they only seem to make us feel better if we think that we're seeing things a certain way, you see. And so we have to be careful of that, otherwise it does become a judgment. Right, mm-hmm. right. Yeah. So that's that's how I see things, honey. You know, yeah, and and because things are changing so quickly and we're we're having to step up to the plate, we have to realize that we're doing things differently now than we ever did before. If we try to do the same thing over and over again or react the same way as we did when we were in survival mode, we're gonna find out that we're gonna get harmed in our own way. We are going to be harmed because it doesn't work. <laughs> Right. Any way that you tried to survive is something that you have to learn today. It's about not surviving. It's about thriving. Hmm. I like that. I like that. So we can you if you believe it or not, we've burned up this first hour already. It's just like <laughs> Zoom. I, I it. it happens every time we have you on. The shows go by so damn fast. <laughs> yeah. So, Mona, uh, I... I'm going to guess that the best con- best uh, point for people to contact you is through the website, yes. sacredconnections.com. No, it's actually Sacred Reconnections. Um, Reconnections, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's www.sacredreconnections.com. And uh, and I just would like to throw in one, one little thing here, and that is that it's not little at all, actually, but it's just about we are having a cruise. I've decided to take the um, um, people on a cruise. So we're going to be able to take about 150 people in April of 2015 it is on the website and i'm 
going to call it the Sacred Journey or Sacred Spirit Journey Cruise. And this is going to be dynamite for people who want to continue the Mayan revelation and be able to really feel where we're going in this world. And I want to take you on a boat to take you to the Mayan um, Honduras and Belize and Cozumel. And so this will be coming up in April. So anybody that's interested in taking our cruise, I highly recommend get on my website, check it out, and then you'll be able to go directly to the cruise director, whose name is Rod Hunt, and then we can go from there. Uh, but there's a lot more coming. We've got uh, wonderful speakers that are going to be on, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and we'll be updating it uh, all the time. So please feel free to go on the website and check it out and come with us. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Uh, what else you got going on? I know you've got some other stuff happening. Um, let's see, what else is going on? Well, I'm doing retreats a lot. Um, I'm doing retreats in Mount Shasta, uh, because Mount Shasta has woken up. It is absolutely phenomenal. Um, so I'm doing retreats there. I've got one coming, uh, August 8th, 9th, and 10th. Um, and, and there's room for, you know, maybe two more people if they want to go at this point. Um, but again, it's on the website. All my events are on the website. I have a calendar up there. It'll say where I'm going and what I'm doing next. Um, and, and again, um, lots of people in Nevada. We're, we're changing over uh, Reno and Carson City and Lake Tahoe. All those areas out there, everything is changing. Um, so I'm, I'm continuously going out there and, and doing a little more work, doing workshops all the time. If people want to learn more about this energy mechanics that I teach, go online on the website. Uh, feel free to email me or write me or even call me. The phone number is there and we'll set you up a workshop, let you know when the other ones are coming in. So um, it is important that we do this. And in the midst of all of this, you're still doing session work, too? All the time. Every day. <laughs> every freaking day. <laughs> Morning and night. Morning and night. My phone is ringing constantly. Yeah. And, and my emails, I have to check about six times a day at least to make sure that I'm getting a hold of everybody. And, yeah, it's, it's, been, a, it's been an amazing um, blow-up time, if you will. But it seems like I've got all the energy to do it, so I'm just making sure I don't try not to miss anybody. <laughs> there you go. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is what you call a light worker. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I just smile and laugh at everything. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, if you're out there listening to this on the YouTubes or the iTunes or the Vimos or wherever you happen to be tuning in at and uh, would like to hear our two, I would suggest you pop on over to the 100 monkeyradiocom and you can find all the information there. So. Oh, we'll be back in just a few minutes with our two. Condemnation without investigation is the height of ignorance. The love you deny is the pain you carry. Namaste, my friends. Freedom's calling, I feel the fire that's deep inside us. Everybody wants change, but tell me who will guide us. To the leaders that pass away, put up your lighters. It's a beautiful struggle, but it cannot divide us. We're the ones that we've always been waiting for. See yourself in the mirror, but open up the door. Walk through it and feel the love to watch your pores. Be the light, life's purpose is to feel joy. Metaphysical, lyrical, standing up for truth. The only one to make change is walking in your shoes. Be the example, don't complain about the news. Making music and serving the world with the loo. Now you can be the same, or you can be the change. Find strength from inside, break through the chains No one to blame, nothing to prove You create your reality, it's up to you Be the change That you wanna see in the world Like God need live for peace Aspire to be Someone who fights for the beliefs Like Martin Luther King Aspire to be That love, that light Like Christ, it's right For the moment in need And if you believe In Jehovah, Allah, Buddha Christians love to me so yearns for peace in a world that's flooded with war History's littered with body scar Trying to settle the score And maintain an archaic platform of power and greed People fight for land out of survival and need So I'm killing my television and I'm planting a seed To fill my head with knowledge that I'm seeing receive Due to the media propaganda killing my creed Or what don't kill me make me stronger Feel a strength when I bleed Fight for interest before it's attached to feet They try to sell you anything in this world Nothing for free Land air, fire, and water They keep up in the ante While the anti proletariat hold the powers to be But we keep fighting, survive and thrive and recycling and rhyme and we constantly incline and we seek through the lying and blind they tactically keep trying to keep you from asking the why and the change that you want to see in the world like Gandhi live for peace aspire to be someone who fights for the beliefs like Martin Luther King aspire to be that love that light like Christ it's like for the moment in need and if you believe in Jehovah Allah Christians love to me we find solutions 
possibilities, creating organizations like Aspire to be, inspiring young minds to see, building life skills, nurturing creativity, fulfilling the youth's basic needs, listening actively, teaching the tools to succeed, positive role models we plant to see, the roots drink the water which feed the trees, someone help me, giving back the smile responsibility, need a change, that you want to see in the world, like I need to live for peace, aspire to be, so I'm on the fight for the beliefs, like more and Fire